A moment set aside for exactly this, to grieve together. For tiny Belgium, the loss is outsized. The grief spilling over its city squares. A minute of silence shared and then broken together with encouraging applause. Now in Brussels, it's not the same, uh, the same feeling, the same atmosphere like we used to know. Even with a heartache. Belgium, a day later, has lots to say, with flowers, candles, and messages calling for unity and defiance. There's clearly a great amount of comfort in coming together like this, but there is still a lot to worry about. One of the attackers is still on the run. Two, it turns out, are Belgian brothers with significant criminal records. Yesterday, they became suicide bombers. One killed himself at the Brussels airport, the other underground on the metro. It's this man who got away. The third suspect, wearing a light jacket and a hat, is on the run, says federal prosecutor Frederick Van Leeuwen. He put down a large bag, then left before the explosion. Disconcerting for Belgians to learn that bag carried the biggest bomb into the airport and that it hadn't exploded as intended. Imagine the losses if it had. And that the attackers had apparently stashed away enough explosives for as many as 10 more bombs, which police discovered in a raid. Disconcerting in tiny Belgium that there may be more threats as yet unknown. So there is no alternative to the deep patience you now need just to board a train. So that every single bag is checked. It is a moment in tiny Belgium when flags must be lowered, soldiers must walk the streets, and when huge, bustling squares fall silent, just for now. Nalaya, CBC News, Brussels.